Darla Lejean, real estate agent with Real Broker in South Louisiana. A question I get asked often, and it's a it's a concern of potential sellers of land. Here's the concern. Lots of times people are looking to sell land for whatever the reason may be. Lots of times it is land that has been inherited. It's land that has been in the family maybe for hundreds and hundreds of years. And the question becomes, if I don't want someone to put a trailer park, a mobile home park, I don't want them to subdivide it, what should I do? And a lot of times people believe that you um, have to hire an attorney and spend lots of money to get that done. You absolutely do not. So let's just say that you were thinking about selling 20 acres of property and when you sell it you do not want it ever to be able to be used for anything except a single family residence okay or you may want it say that it can be used for anything but you don't want a mobile home park to ever be built on that property simple as this all you have to do is the seller is record at the courthouse what you do not want to happen with that land. So, if you don't want the land to be subdivided, for example, let's say it's 10 acres, and you do not want it to be subdivided into smaller tracts of land, then that's what you put in the, in the restrictions that you file at the courthouse. And listen, all you have to do is type it up, get someone to type it up for you, go file it at the courthouse, it then becomes a legal document. And it stays with the property. If you don't want livestock, to ever be on the property for whatever the case may be. Basically, you can put anything on the land that you choose to. Now, as the buyer, as a buyer, I get this question a lot of times, or, or this, this is the comment I get from lots of buyers. I don't wanna buy land with any kind of restrictions. Well, what some people fail to realize is that out in the country, for the most part, if the land is not in a dedicated subdivision, it's not the same thing as being in a subdivision where you have all these crazy rules. The most strict rules that I would say happen in the country for the most part is no livestock, um, no accumulation of broken down vehicles can be left on property, um, a home on wheels, cannot be on the property. A home that ever had wheels and an axle cannot be on the property. These are common restrictions in the country when people subdivide their property. For example, I have listed in Evangeline uh, initially nine three to three and a half acre tracts of property, gorgeous property. If you've driven down there lately, right across from B&W, which used to be Quick Trip. Those were nine, three to three and a half acre tracts of property. There's only two left. And the restrictions on that property says this, you cannot have any kind of home that was ever on wheels or an axle. You can build any kind of home that you choose to build. It can be a shop house. Uh, it can be a tiny house. Listen, it could be a mansion. It could be any kind of house, as long as it never had wheels and an axle, okay? You cannot have a camper to live in. Even if it's temporarily, you cannot have a camper. Um, you cannot have livestock. You cannot have an accumulation of trash, which listen, all that's doing is keeping the property values up on those pieces of property. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is this. One of the restrictions on that property is you can't have any kind of poultry, which means you can't have ducks or chickens can't have ducks or chickens but let's say once all of that property is sold and every every piece has an owner which we have two left so listen if you're looking for land those are two gorgeous pieces of property left surrounded by some beautiful homes that have already started to go up but let's just say once all nine of those tracks are sold that every single person in that area that all owns the, the uh, tracks of property decide that they want to be able to have chickens. 
they want to be able to have chickens. So if every single person agrees that they want to allow chickens, then they can file something in the courthouse that says we own all of this property and we want to change it and we now all agree to have chickens. That absolutely can happen, right? Or let's say everybody decides that they want to dig a pond and every person that, that owns the property wants to be able to have ducks or swans or geese or whatever the case may be in their ponds. Every single owner, if every single owner agrees, they could go to the courthouse, file something at the courthouse that says, we all agree to have ducks or we all agree to have geese and then it can happen. But only if every single person that owns every tract of property agrees. So it can be changeable, just remember that. It can absolutely be changeable. Um, so if you own property and you it's next door to your house, for example, let's just say you own 50 acres next to your house and you wanna sell that property, but you are scared to death of selling it because you don't want, let's say you don't want a gas station. You don't want a trailer park. You don't want any kind of weird business, which there's a, if y'all are not aware, there is um, actually a special session going on tonight at the main courthouse at six o'clock by the police juror, where a group of people bought some land in the community of Mowater and their plan was to build a sex shop. It's when you buy land in the country, there are really nothing, there are no kind of rules, laws, ordinances that says that you can't do what you want to with your property, right? But what becomes a problem is when people in the community begin to realize what's going on and they have an issue with it. That's another case, right? So if you have 50, 100, 200 acres of property by your house and you need the money and you need to sell it and you want to sell it, but you want single family, just regular homes to be built there, then you file at the courthouse restrictions that you want to stay with the property. So you might not want mobile home parks. You might want to say you don't want um, people to be able to live in campers. You might not want livestock, whatever the case may be you have the right as the landowner to file those restrictions at the courthouse and they stay with the property now you absolutely can hire an attorney to do it for you and there are attorneys that do it every day they probably don't charge very much they have a list of about 10 different restrictions that are commonly used in the country and that's how it happens you can also do that too so if you are thinking about selling or you're thinking about buying Make sure you know your rights. Make sure you know if anything is attached to that property that says it can't be subdivided. Let's say you're buying 10 acres of property and you're keeping five for you and you wanna keep five for somebody else to build a house on. Make sure that you know that you can subdivide that property, that nothing is recorded at the courthouse that says it cannot be subdivided. So make sure either as a seller or as a buyer you know your rights. And if you're not sure, listen, get in touch with me, get in touch with any real estate agent who you know, like, and trust, get in touch with an attorney, know your rights as a buyer or a seller. Um, looks like a great day today, y'all. Get out and vote if you haven't voted yet. Tomorrow is a major, major, major election. My child, who is a freshman at LSU, didn't know that he could register to vote in Baton Rouge, so he's making a special trip tomorrow back from Baton Rouge all the way to Crowley just to vote and then turning around and going back to LSU. So it's important to vote. Please go out and vote. Make your voices heard. Y'all have a great day. Remember in real estate, there are no stupid questions. If you have questions about anything at all real estate related, I love talking real estate. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Um, Y'all take care.